Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry we're a few minutes late. Uh, welcome, and we'll call the meeting to order. A uh, small but mighty group of committee members today. Um, so we'll call our first um, uh, item, actually. Do we have uh, minutes to approve? We must have. Yeah, sorry. First, uh, first is the approval of the minutes of the March 21st meeting, please. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? <laughs> Anyone contrary-minded? Not seeing any. Thanks. Thank God. Okay, and our next item, we'll uh, ask for Mr. Roulette to introduce our uh, our guest speaker today. Just and maybe Phil will say this as well. But I just um, I really love the idea for for committee moving forward uh, to uh, 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 on an ongoing basis uh, have speakers come in and, and speak to us uh, at committee to to share their stories, to share uh, some of the amazing uh, and 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 I'll stop because I'm sure I'm taking some of what Phil wants to say, but just to share uh, their successes, their stories. Uh, with us uh, and um, and uh, so we can share that out with the community so sorry Phil over to you thank you your worship um, we uh, we are doing these presentations at the start of each growth committee uh, meeting and uh, we're kind of coining it growing in st. John and uh, listen this it's a merger of two different uh, components that we've heard from the growth committee number one we've heard from growth committee members we've also heard from staff uh, partners in the community how many great success stories there are related to growth in our community. Um, the other uh, side of it is that we've also heard from the Growth Committee, we've got to be better at explaining these success stories. We need to own and celebrate the great news that's happening here in St. John. So um, uh, essentially what we're, we're doing is we're going to merge those two ideas together and use this great platform of the Growth Committee to highlight some of these success stories. And when we talk about success stories, this could be you know a profiling uh, major employers, developers, investors, newcomers, community partners, new enterprise, uh, uh, welcomers and recruiters, a whole bunch of different things. And um, we are very excited to have our first uh, here today uh, to do this, this short presentation. They will be uh, no longer than 10 minutes. And um, we have uh, today with us Jan Del Valle. And uh, uh, David uh, Dobelstein and I had, had met uh, Jan a while back, but he was originally born in Cuba. Uh, he attended uh, uh, the, Agrari the Agrarian University of Havana, uh, where he was president of the Student uh, Federation of, for the Faculty for Social and Humani Humanities. Um, his first job in St. John when he arrived in 2005 was cleaning at Prince Edward Square. And uh, he is now owner of three different businesses, Jay Valley Cleaning, Connections Bistro okay. at the St. John Airport, and 14 and a half Restaurant at the Reversing Falls. He lives uh, here in St. John with his uh, wife, Yenny, and three children. So I'll ask uh, Jan to come up. Uh, we're going to give him 10 minutes, and uh, then we'll, we'll go on with our meeting. Wonderful. Oh, I'll just uh, turn that on. One second, Jan. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's, uh, it's a huge honor uh, for me and for my family that... Uh, we have not just been accepted in St. John, helped throughout, but also been celebrated as well uh, by, the, uh, by the city, by our own city. Um, I'm going to repeat something um, I said when we, when we were at the last year in November at the Prude um, conference uh, or event. Um, my story, uh, our story, tells, tells about us. But it also tells about St. John, and I said this uh, one, once and once and once again, because our story tells how you enable people like me that come from away, uh, come with nothing, to succeed here within, within the city and within you. Um, I'm from, from Cuba, as Phil was saying. Um, I came to St. John uh, as a young age. Young age. Um, when I came here, um, at one point I felt that I had no um, uh, no support. I, I didn't know how to move forward in St. John. I spoke very little English, um, but it was a community for us. It was a community. Uh, it was kind of a, we find that in our, um, in my own experience has been kind of a group effort, like people pushing and rooting for us and helping us throughout. Uh, we have been given so many opportunities. Um, everywhere we get and we ask for something, the door seems to open. And um, 
I, I don't think it's to do with us so much as it is with this city and the, the, its people, like how they, they really accept and take us in. Um, James Mollinger will say this better than me, but every time I engage in a conversation with somebody that I, uh, that I just met and uh, they are asking where I'm coming from and why I'm here, uh, when I say that I am come from Cuba, uh, they open their eyes big like this and they said, but why in the world did you end up here? And I almost, and I almost get this feeling across, like, like we don't. I'm, uh, sometimes I think that we're not. We don't look the city and its people with the same pair of eyes, with the same experiences. To us, Saint John has been a paradise. Has been where all of uh, my dreams and my family's dream, my wife's dream, have become true. No short of sacrifices. Uh, no short of hard, hard work. But every objective that we have set. Uh, we have been able to met, and uh, it's been because this this amount of people behind us pushing us and helping us throughout the process. Um, I recall when I first uh, I did an interview at NCO, and this is back in 2006. And uh, my I had a broken English, a little a uh, little better now, but at the time it was uh, it was difficult to communicate good good in English. I didn't feel I fared. Um, too well in that interview, and I was given the position. Years later, I met with uh, Jane, she was a human resource lady at uh, the St. John Airport, and uh, I saw her and her husband sitting on a table, and I said, well, I have to come and say hi, and I sat with them, and I asked Jane, after like five minutes, I said, Jane, why did you give me the position? My English was terrible, and you were putting me on the phone to speak English. And I said, and she said to me, well, I know your English was challenging, uh, but I knew you were learning fast. Um, she spoke with uh, the, the, the private teacher that, I was, uh, that was helping me at the time, and she said to, to her that I was picking up the English really fast, and she said, I thought you needed an opportunity. Hmm. I gave you an opportunity, and uh, you didn't disappoint. Years later, when my wife goes into um, uh, maternity leave, uh, because we had our first daughter, Sophia, the finances at home were, were tough. Uh, um, we were, were having a hard time trying to pay the bills and uh, keep up. And that's why when J. Val Cleaning, our, uh, our commercial cleaning business, started. It was not easy. Um, I printed 100 cards at quick copy. And uh, six months it took to get our first business, our first little contract. Uh, at the time, I worked in another call center, Unilever, and I had a, two different chefs. The one chef that will start one week uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning or 9.30, and the second week on a rotating basis at 11 o'clock. That week that I would start at 11 o'clock, I would go out with my carts, and I would just be knocking door, like kind of a cold calls, uh, sales calls, and I was, no, thank you, we're good, um, you know, we're taking care of, we're okay, uh, leave me your card if we need in the future, we'll call you. Six months. It can be depressing when you're rejected so many times everywhere. Not rejected per se, but they are not taking your services. So it's discouraging too. Um, six months later, we were able to get our first contract, and um, it was Kerry Co uh, sorry, uh, Kathy Coyle from the Coyle Group in St. John. Lexus was just built at the time. Um, and I came and I talked to Kathy. They said, you have to talk to this lady. And I, I spoke with her. And uh, I asked Kathy for uh, the work. And uh, anyway, Kathy gave us the work. And they gave us later all the uh, older businesses. And years later, again, one day at Kathy and Kerry's home, I asked uh, Kathy, Kathy, why did you give me the job back in 2000? I think it was 2011. And she said, I thought you needed help. I thought you needed a hair start. And, uh, you know, you came and uh, it, it was my time to help. That's how she felt. And again, it's this uh, a story that repeats itself almost like in a cycle every time we can. And uh, we ask for, um, for an opportunity. And the opportunity is given. And not every single time, but that's what it, that, that's what it have taken for us. Approach people, ask, um, and then it, it happens. Um, it, it comes through. Um, so we've been so fortunate. Uh, all of my coming to Canada for me has been um, 
all of my dreams becoming true has been it was a turning point in my life. I met my wife. She's from Cuba, but I met her in St. John. <laughs> um, we have three kids. Everything is happening for us in St. John. And uh, my message, because we are, as, uh, as a newcomer and with my Latin background or Hispanic back background, I'm around a lot of newcomers, a lot of immigrants. And this is the, the message that we, uh, we give them. Uh, I tell them immigration is, uh, is like a marriage. Your marriage, you're marrying the city where you're coming in, where you're moving into. Not for once I have ever pretended to turn St. John to the image of Cuba. And I'm so proud of my Cuban heritage. But understanding that you're coming here, respecting the tradition, pres understanding and learning and, um, and cherishing the heritage of the place you're coming in, it enables you to bond. And it has to be, again, just like a marriage works. That is, when there is more compromise, you get better results. And that has been our own experience. You know, the more we give into St. John, the more we try to, uh, to be compatible with the city, these people, the better it works. And that is my message every single time to the newcomers, because I, I understand or, or I feel very important for all of us to, under, to, to know exactly the city that we're coming in, the province that we're coming in, uh, what are the challenges that they, they might have, and how we can contribute as good citizens. So um, that is a message that I have. And uh, again, every time I have an opportunity to speak, uh, whether in public or with um, a new uh, group, uh, or just in, in a, a, a one by one interaction, I always say uh, how thankful we are, how grateful we are. Um, my wife, my, um, my friend Heather White, she, um, she wrote something a, a couple of years ago, and she said, "St. John, uh, Jan took a chance in St. John, and St. John took a chance on Jan. And that's the way immigration works. We take a chance on a place that we don't know for a variety of reasons. And, uh, and we, when we make it work, you know, this is a result. So once again, thank you. Um, you may not feel that you're directly uh, connected to my story, but in a way you are because you're setting the city for, for what, it, what it is and for what it will become. And uh, helping and, um, and seeing more of uh, success stories like mine, it would also have a very positive impact in the community. Because we've, we are like a small umbrella for a, a lot of uh, newcomers. that They come in, they don't know where to turn to. Um, we provide them the first job opportunity uh, we help them to get set up, get their apartments. Um, uh, my mentor, Angel Negreda, um, he's been helping immigrants for years and years. And uh, out of his own, own time, he doesn't charge anything. And, um, and every time somebody comes in, he takes them to the government to find out what the, the, uh, the, the documents and the application they have to fill out, uh, like how to settle this newcomer that we come here almost lost, like we don't know where to look or what to do. And uh, so a smaller enterprises like mine are a, are, are, can be an oasis for these newcomers that they come here and they don't know where to turn to. And uh, so thank you so much once again, and um, it's just a pleasure and an honor for us to be uh, to be celebrated in this meeting. Thank you, Yen. There may be a couple of questions for you, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, Deputy, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you to you because I'm happy that you love St. John and that St. John has reached out to you. But just from your short story today, you have an inner courage within yourself and you didn't give up. You kept trying. You've explained that through the years there were times that, you know, you needed somebody. You went to Kathy Coyle. She gave you a chance. But I'm sure that when she did give you a chance that you did a great job for her. Mm -hmm. And you kept your job and you worked from there into other things. So I really commend you for that. Thank because you. Because that means you have a very a strong, you're a very strong person to do that, to come into a city and keep working and reach out and never, ever give up. That's... Uh, a great quality to have. Thank you. So congratulations to you and your wife and your family. Thank, Thank you so you. much, sir.
Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Councilor McKenzie. Thank you, Worship. Thank you very much, Ann, for coming in, you, you and your wife, and uh, doing the presentation. So <clears throat> it's a very interesting story, and I know that you are in touch with uh, newcomers on a daily basis. Um, in your view, what is the one barrier, the hardest thing to overcome, or the one thing that we're not doing that we maybe should be doing? That's a really good question. Um, there are many things I'll tell you. Um, there are a couple of barriers, and there is a cultural barrier, which is um, is one of the steepest to, to climb, um, um, especially when it comes to languages for uh, foreigners that are coming from uh, from other countries that don't don't have the English as a first language, or if they don't bring the English, and that was my case. That's uh, that's a big uh, um, mountain to climb. Um, there are other issues, and at the end of the day, it comes down to opportunities. As immigrants, uh, when we come here, we feel we have this golden opportunity, and we have this uh, feel of uh, this urgency, this sense of urgency that we have to make it work. We have to advance in life and advance in a very short period of time. And I think we all share, uh, most of us share this uh, this feeling when we first come in. And um, and if they don't find the right opportunities or the help they uh, they seek, and somebody else in other city is helping them, or just to find connect with the job, sometimes as easy as that, they will move. And we've seen people moving um, moving from St. John. A lot of our friends have moved to St. John for, you know, just to get a better job or just to get a job uh, sometimes. Um, and many times I feel that it's just every time we lose an immigrant, we lose a newcomer, somebody that came into the city, I think we, I feel that defeat. Um, and I, I shared this with uh, some of my friends as well. Uh, I met and I meet on a regular basis this bright, talented, um, newcomers that come to the city and we look at them and, and, and you can tell that if we're able to grab them in 10 years time these people will be shining in the city so the, the, the big the big challenge is can we keep them how do we make that leap and make sure that they get the roots here in St. John um, we're working with uh, the Imperial Theatre uh, being appointed as an ambassador um, and I think it's important to create these roots as well um, with the newcomers and that connection to the city. It also comes from the, the, the arts and the, and the culture as well, like creating that connection as well, I've, I find is important. Um, and, and maybe perhaps doing uh, some sort of a, uh, a website perhaps or, or a, place, a place where we can find if I need, if, if, if I need an immigration lawyer or if I need to apply, I'm waiting for a... Um, just as simple as a work permit. And uh, we need some, uh, some relief in the short term. Uh, where do we go? What, how do we do it? How do we build a resume? Uh, there are simple things and all the resources and all of the, um, uh, everything is out there right now as it is for, for our own citizens, but newcomers don't know where those services are. They don't know how to connect, how to go and get that help. And uh, that's when, as of now, I find that there are a lot of organizations, but in a lot of cases, uh, private individuals like, like me, like Angel, like Heather, Heather Britton, we step up and we help them through the process. But sometimes that is, we feel that it's that gap. Where do we find the services that already exist? How do we access them? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, and I, I, um, a couple of thoughts. Um, I'm going to start with the last bullet that I wrote down and just how fortunate St. John is to have you and Yenny and your children here with us, to have you as entrepreneurs, to have you as an inspirational, as inspirational leaders in our community. Uh, we're the fortunate ones. Uh, so thank you. Th thank you very much for that. Um, I think you've given us some incredible insight today. Uh, I, I was, the other reflection I was having is I wish my 20-year-old was here to, to, to hear your success formula, which is, you know, hard work and grit. And uh, sometimes you don't want to get up and go to work, but you have to get up and go to work. And you get a 100 cards, and you hand the 100 cards out, and you never give up. And, uh, and I'm so inspired to hear that uh, some, some folks it gave, just gave you a, a chance. 
thought you needed an opportunity and and um, you know so I think we uh, I'm so proud of this community it's a it's a community it's uh, it's it's becoming even more richly diverse uh, culturally uh, you know we we must grow I think that's a message that's getting out across uh, the province certainly uh, you know in this region uh, we had a great presentation at council uh, uh, last week that we're, we're 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 making some headway you know we're we're we've turned the corner instead of the numbers going down to go in the other direction but the points that you've raised today uh, we have a project I hope you'll be pleased to hear uh, called succeed and stay which is all about uh, through that lens of uh, newcomers and streamlining and boy are we thankful that you're meeting with uh, with newcomers to help them navigate but but ultimately we have to have a system uh, that works here locally so newcomers can uh, navigate through uh, I love the idea of uh, community champions uh, I I think we have an army of of, uh, of incredible Greater St. Johners who uh, who would love to become mentors and champions. I think that's a great idea that we could explore that you've uh, given us uh, some insight into today. And um, and but on the other side, a bit more bluntly, I would say I think we need more people. We have incredibly talented newcomers. I too meet them regularly, and and um, and uh, I'm afraid that we're not going to give them the chance, and that they are going to move off that they have no choice but to move to another bigger city and we need to continue to work as a community uh, with employers in particular uh, and there's so many amazing organizations that are, are doing work in this field that I, again I we punch way above our weight class here in st. John in terms of our our enterprises but we need to get our employers to recognize that that um, there's a massive talent pool of incredibly passionate, hardworking people that that I feel are not always getting uh, that opportunity that that they deserve to at least even be interviewed in some cases. So we've we do have some gaps, and I, I appreciate you identifying that today. I would expect that through our Succeed and Stay project, we're going to get at those gaps and put some of those success measures uh, in place. So um, I just want to thank you. Uh, you provided uh, tremendous insights today in terms of formula and lastly I would just say I won't share too too much of your private information but I did share with you privately that uh, you know we we receive many files here at council and many folks want to lease something from us or they want to you know do some type of business with the city and I remember uh, in three years and thousands of files I remember one day we were uh, we were given this package and uh, an individual wanted to lease a building that we owned and that with that it wasn't just a we'll we'll pay X or it was a complete business plan on here's the business we're going to run here's how we're going to be successful here's our our many year plan and that was Jan and Yenny for their newest business in the former Boaz uh, uh, on the west side and I just I walked away thinking this is an individual I didn't yet know you uh, uh, this is an individual who's got their uh, ducks in line uh, who is a, a, a successful business person because they're putting the, the the effort and the sweat and the energy and and the fun fundamentals in place you didn't just ask us to lease you a building you said lease me a building and here's the business plan and I'm gonna work hard and here's how I'm gonna be successful so uh, your success formula I'd say just keep it up and I can't wait to uh, uh, to see you be Prime Minister of the country someday <laughs> and you'll just keep on going so thank you so much for sharing with us today thank you thank You're, you so much okay thank you okay thanks can I have a receive and file please council okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> all those, somebody else I know, I, I, I could have done it, I suppose. But, <laughs> oh, great. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Anyone contraminded? Thank you. Well, that was wonderful. Um, and as our first uh, our first presentation like that, uh, uh, Mr. Roulette, uh, thank you. And let's, uh, let's keep that up. Okay, next item uh, is our... Um, and I'm going to turn this over to you again, Phil, for our uh, 2018 reporting and 2019 outlook. Sorry, Ms. Hamilton first. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, Your Worship and members of the committee. Yeah, you're on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're pleased to be here um, this afternoon to present back to the committee the 2019 work plan for growth um, and the presentation 
Philo Lett is just queuing up. Um, we'll celebrate the successes um, from the last year, as well as give you a sense of what's ahead for 2019. And uh, certainly this was very much developed with the input of the Growth Committee. We had a session back in December, and I hope you see your feedback reflected back in the, in the work plan. Um, as you will see, 2019 will continue to be a very ambitious, uh, um, uh, ambitious year for driving the growth agenda uh, in St. John. Um, there are a number of themes that I think um, certainly a committee brought up uh, back in December. Um, you'll see the work plan is very much tied to um, our corporate uh, priorities around fiscal sustainability and the important role that growth plan the, the growth agenda plays in that. And that will be priority one uh, for us in terms of delivering um, that key area. We also see a theme around um, really staying the course and continuing the positive momentum um, that we have seen in the past uh, year and, and a bit since uh, the adoption of the city's growth strategies related to the roadmap roadmap for smart growth and the population growth framework. And uh, finally, um, we'll, we'll certainly, uh, it makes room for new initiatives um, that are emerging new initiatives that have been brought forward by the committee, particularly related to uh, process improvement um, in the custo customer service area, and we'll talk more about that. Um, so certainly we have um, an ambitious year ahead. Um, the delivery of this work plan um, will involve really the whole organization, the city working all hands on deck as well as um, working together with Growth Committee and uh, our community partners. So we're pleased to be here to, to share the highlights of that this afternoon. Wonderful, thank you. <clears throat> Great, I'll, uh, I'll get us uh, started here on the presentation. I'm not gonna go through uh, every slide in detail, um, and so we'll, we'll try to get through this pretty quickly, but I did wanna just add one thing to, to Jacqueline's comments is that uh, the Growth Committee requested this work plan uh, concept on growth, which is basically, let's bring together all these efforts that we're putting together on growth and let's see it in one package. Uh, so this is the second year that we've done this, and some of the primary reasons for doing this is to enhance accountability, to enhance transparency, and enhance uh, a collaboration collective ownership over growth. Um, I did uh, the first couple slides just share with you that there are several players involved in delivering growth. This is by no means a presentation that will try to indicate that uh, you know the growth and community development team has achieved all that's in this presentation. That's not the intention at all. Uh, there are several different players. It is an ecosystem of, of players, uh, both internal and external to the organization. There is a, a core team that focuses on growth uh, more intentionally within agency and uh, housed within the city manager's office as well as the growth and community development team. And then uh, the, gro uh, the group of partners uh, here in St. John that that support growth uh, directly and indirectly is is large. There's a lot of players in this, in this ecosystem. So it's certainly worth acknowledging before we go any further. Um, also, it's worth mentioning that you've already, the, the Growth Committee has already received two presentations on year-end reporting uh, and 2019 outlook uh, from Develop SJ as well as Economic Development Greater St. John in, in the March meeting. Uh, uh, obviously, today you're receiving uh, this kind of growth work plan, uh, the one that you'd seen earlier in the year. And uh, we have uh, Discover St. John coming in in May, uh, which uh, will curtail off of their uh, AGM uh, to share a little bit about what to, uh, what to expect in 2019 and, and what went really well in 2018. Um, I did want to share with you a little summary on, on financing. We did this uh, uh, last year as well. Just to give you an idea when we talk about growth, what is what is actually really directly involved? And uh, there's really, uh, I see it in three uh, broader categories. One is the external agencies. Uh, so the 2018 investment <coughs> is there. And there's also a series of assets uh, which are, are meant to be economic and cultural in nature. These are uh, meant to be supportive, enabling to our ability to grow as a community. And and then we also have growth and community development services specifically. In addition to that, we also have, um, uh, I guess, non-operating non uh, specific uh, funds. We have a, a growth reserve fund, which I'll give a little bit more detail on, as well as the neighborhood plan capital fund, uh, which uh, has $500,000 uh, in it right now. So just a quick summary on the growth reserve. Uh, uh, as of January 1st, there's $814,000 left. Now, there are some of those funds that are committed and active, which means that Council has already said we, we want to spend some of that money and go, go and, and proceed. So that includes succeed and stay, communicating growth, 
um, effort as well as uh, digital renderings of the na uh, neighborhood plan. And there's also two pending ones that, uh, that are also within, uh, some of them will be uh, discussed here today. Some are going to council soon. So if all those committed and active and pending uh, were, 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 were taken out of the total equation, we'd have $509,000 left in the, uh, in the growth reserve uh, total uh, pot that's unallocated and uncommitted at this stage. Um, so a very high level 2018, which I think is really important for us to just to take a step back, not going into specifics. A lot happened in 2018 on the growth in the growth world. 2017, if you remember, that was uh, the roadmap for smart growth. Very active year, a lot of stuff. But 2018 <coughs> was the second year of that. Still, a lot happened. We introduced Develop SJ to uh, to the landscape. Uh, there was the adoption of a population growth framework that was actually only in 2018. Sometimes it feels like it was five years ago, but it was only last year. Um, uh, there was a new strategic plan developed from Economic Development Greater St. John. Um, as we will see, we we've achieved quite a bit on the targets. Uh, when I use targets, it's really a dashboard, which I'll share with you shortly, uh, and also a tremendous uh, momentum and first draft of the neighborhood plan and uh, the new heritage bylaw. Um, so just before I pass this on to David, who's going to come up and just share a little bit more on the population specific, uh, I did want to, to share with you that uh, this work plan, uh, again, was, a, was presented to a growth committee earlier in 2018. Uh, it really focuses in on the interactions that the city staff have on growth. So this is not meant to be an exhaustive list of every single agency's work plans and opportunity in New Brunswick. That's not what it is. It is what we, we touch directly in support of our leadership roles. And this was shared, this specific list was shared with growth earlier in the year. Uh, it is also uh, divided up into different categories, population, tax base, employment, as well as process improvement. So with that, I'll, I'll invite David just for a couple slides to talk about population, and then you'll hear from me again soon. Thank you. So uh, as you're all aware, we released the framework uh, endorsed by council basically a year ago. Um, it's a community document. It's a community strategy. It's not specifically owned um, by the city, but there's a lot of actions that we'll be talking about, and I won't go through all of them in detail, but um, the ones that are green are the ones, obviously, that are completed. Um, the Love Your City campaign, which was led by our communications department, is about fostering civic pride. The hashtag My St. John really well received. They're now working on a new video series in 2019. Um, we hosted welcome ceremonies for newcomers last year that were successful enough that we've decided we want to keep doing this. Uh, we're going to be doing some more this year. Um, and I'll talk about our enhanced presentation for exploratory visits here in a moment. The other uh, thing of note, we have a new arts and culture coordinator, Kate Wilcott, who you've met. Um, this was the cultural affairs portfolio that we reposition. There's still a heavy focus on supporting arts, but there's a new focus on supporting cultural groups, and particularly ethnocultural groups. So we just heard from our last presenter how important, you know, support from people's um, home countries are, or people who have shared experience. And so one of the things that we're working on over the next few years is to support and foster the development of more ethnocultural groups in the city who can be our ambassadors to our newest residents and help them make the smooth transition here. The other items that you see in blue, for the most part, have been rolled into our Succeed and Stay project, which was just announced a month and a half ago. So these are projects now that we actually have funding for and are moving ahead um, this year. So in terms of an enhanced process and presentation for exploratory visits, we had mentioned to council we were going to give a brief presentation on what this was. Uh, there was a new stream, that, a new provincial immigration stream that was released uh, in 2018, uh, particularly targeting business entrepreneurs. So these are folks who would have a net worth of at least $600,000 Canadian uh, and are willing to commit at least $250,000 in a new business in New Brunswick, and they have to create two new jobs on top of anything they create for themselves or for their family. So they can settle anywhere in the, in the province, and it's not that I want to say it's a competition, but it's very competitive. Uh, businesses would be, could be successful in Fredericton, Moncton, St. John, Bathurst. So we took a consolidated approach in the city where we started meeting with all the folks who were interested in coming here as entrepreneurs in 2018. So we met with 57 different families uh, who came on exploratory visits from all over the world. Um, 
57% of them were from China. We had a large portion from Vietnam, many from Iran, uh, almost 10% from other countries. Uh, what's very promising uh, is the recent data that we just released or received from the province indicates that in this new stream, the province has uh, put forward 222 uh, entrepreneurs as being nominated, and a full 25% of them have selected St. John as their intended destination where they want to set up their business. Now, there's still some hurdles to go through, and as you can see from the icons on the screen, this is a, a collaborative effort with our partners, but it's a very streamlined approach. The immigrants just have to make one phone call, and they get scheduled interviews with everybody on the list. Um, if they were to set up their businesses over the next year or two, it represents a potential of greater than 112 new jobs and over $14 million in business investment. And for point of reference, some of these folks would be wanting to start very small businesses, like a convenience store, and others are looking to start medium to very large scale businesses like manufacturing plants, uh, things of that nature. It's the, the challenge with this is you don't really know what they're talking about until you actually have them in the room. And I know our mayor has met with many of our visitors in the past before. So we're going to continue uh, with this, and hopefully we'll see some strong returns. Uh, some other th uh, items that you see here. So from promoting the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, uh, the recent data that we received from the province is that there's been an increase um, of the amount of employers who are using this program of over 200% in the last year. So they really exceeded their goal significantly. Uptown St. John hosted a very successful apartment tour last year. Uh, the new multicultural festival that was hosted last year, Culture Fest, was so successful it's planned again for this year on June 15th. Uh, HSJ is still working on international business attraction. Uh, we went on recruitment missions last year. We're going on more this year. Uh, and we have our partners who are also going on recruitment missions as well with us. And the idea here is we take businesses who have job offers and we're going and selling the lifestyle. <coughs> what we hope to get to in the future is actually bringing people who've moved from those countries as our ambassadors. Because it's one thing for someone from City Hall to tell them why it's a good thing to live in St. John. It's, it's something else if we were to say go to Cuba and bring someone who's been successfully integrated in the city and say, here's what it's really like and it's awesome. So that's, that's the plan for the future. We have more mixers planned. Uh, there's, we've just started um, sort of a youth retention task force. It's still very early days. Uh, and we're going to continue to profile our successful immigrants, as you've just heard one example today. So in terms of overall trends, these are sort of the three main buckets from the framework of attract, uh, enhance, and retain. Now, we hadn't committed to starting to monitor these until the end of this year or into 2020, but we thought we'd give you a bit of a snapshot of how we're doing already. So as you heard from the presentation last week, the city is growing. Um, in terms of permanent residents who came to St. John last year, we had 835, which represents about 8.4% of an increase over the previous year. So we're on target to hit uh, 1,075 permanent residents. This is still a bit of a stretch goal. Now, it's certainly within the realm of what's possible because both Moncton and Fredericton had over 1,400 this past year. So, And we know that we've hit over 1,200 before in 2016. So we know that this is possible, but there's a lot of uh, factors at play here. Um, in terms of economic immigrants, the target, at least the provincial level, was to have 70% of the immigrants who come to New Brunswick as being from the economic streams. Essentially, they're either self-reliant and they create a business, or they're coming as highly skilled workers that can move very quickly into a job where we have uh, you know, high vacancy rates. And so that target currently uh, is at 82%, so it's above target. And our target for 2019 to 2020, we wanted to see a greater than 400 a person increase in population and already in the past year we've seen it increase by over 432. Uh, with the enhanced stream, our local immigration partnership is still working on our settlement strategy. Now with the release of Succeed and Stay, we're working on a research project to have this be a whole lot more data driven. So while this will be delayed, we're fairly confident we'll have a much better product in the end day that will really help us provide new strategies and more granular ideas and activities on how we can best support newcomers in integrating to St. John. And then with Retain, obviously I mentioned some of this last week at council meeting. Um, we've seen a significant reduction in interprovincial migration. Um, the baseline for the previous census period, we were losing almost 800 people per year net loss. And now in the past uh, two years, it's been an average of negative 214. So as an example, we're seeing a whole lot more people move to St. John from Western Canada than the other way around. So that is completely reversed. There still is a lot of work to do. There still is a lot of competition with other regional cities. And we obviously need to make sure that people here have good jobs. Um, but there's some tremendously good progress in this uh, file, and we're going to keep working at this. And I will 
turn this back over to Phil. Thank you, David. I'll uh, just go through to the end here of our uh, of our slides on uh, on the uh, the work plan for 2018, and I just just want to mention that of the 37 projects that were identified by the growth committee, 92 percent of them are either delivered or uh, active. Uh, one of the lessons uh, maybe learned from a staff perspective is that uh, that pool of projects was probably pretty large from a lessons learned standpoint. Uh, keeping it shorter uh, would be uh, wiser, um, maybe into the future. So that's a lesson that maybe we can we can learn from, and certainly will be indicative of what you see with the 2019 uh, work plan. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, likely my favorite slide in uh, in uh, the presentation, and uh, this is the mayor's dashboard. This is the growth dashboard and every year um, through a variety of agencies um, there are different targets that are established related to growth and they set them at the start of the year and say we're going to do this and all their work is intended to achieve those targets and these targets are linked to those three big areas that the growth committee has identified as priorities tax base employment and population. Uh, as David said, population is only going to come into, into effect uh, this coming year in, in, in 2020. But um, so this was established at the start of the year. And what's on uh, the right hand of that, of that uh, table is year end results. Uh, so for the most part, we are uh, exceeding or, uh, or met um, uh, six of these nine targets, uh, these categories of targets. Um, some of them are very, very, very close. Uh, you know, example, Edge just reported uh, that uh, they targeted 845 new and retained jobs. Well, uh, they'd reported that they'd uh, hired 821 and had announcements for 896. So, you know, very, very uh, close uh, um, there. Startups uh, above above average. Some of the areas where we've we're challenged, which is something that is a is a trend, is um, a plan. SJ establishes um, uh, primary development area and intensification zones and that all development should fit within those so for the PDA it's 95 percent and 85 percent for intensification in 2018 we hit 90 percent of all development occurred within that that PDA area and in the intensification area only 59 percent and so those numbers are dropping um, which uh, which is which is a challenging uh, stat but um, and also obviously we had the first year for for uh, develop SJ and uh, they just shared uh, a lot of major projects a lot of big projects that are very reliant on uh, on uh, that would have a massive impact uh, which are still in the work so uh, they've reported that uh, there's 29.6 uh, million in tax base growth uh, without acknowledging these other large base projects which probably get them over the uh, the edge yeah just uh, sorry to interrupt Phil just to qualify your um, um, your the, the first bullet on develop st. John there was actually two targets and just to, to for for the audience um, uh, the 75 million dollar tax base increase uh, was uh, with the museum project included which we know it's been uh, it's been um, uh, postponed for for now so that met the 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 without target so I just want to qualify that for the for the audience that um, th that that one is uh, there was a there was a little asterisk that said mm -hmm. if the museum goes ahead uh, that the target if the museum doesn't go ahead the targets um, in fact I think it was around 25 or 26 million so that actually exceed exceeded yeah. target as well uh, without the museum project thanks it's a, it's a great point uh, I'll keep going. In, in uh, December 2019, as Jacqueline had mentioned, we had uh, solicited input from the Growth Committee on what do you what do you think about 2019? What what do we, what do you want? Uh, just a couple themes there: continue on the beautification of our neighborhoods, uh, celebrate our success more more uh, more intentionally, uh, play a role of enabling growth, um, and really focus on customer service among other things. Uh, so that's just a summary of of what we received uh, from the the committee. So this is the new 2019 uh, growth uh, work plan. Sorry again, yeah. Phil, to interrupt. Did you, um, my kids when they were little would call it scoop a few pages. Did uh, did I miss? Did we go through the tax base growth slides, or you yeah, intend we not just, to? We just we just, I okay. just yeah. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. I just a uh, summary. I just uh, um, if, you, if there's any questions, we can certainly respond go to back it. okay so now we're at to slide 19 here on uh, growth uh, projects for 2019 sorry and um, 
Uh, listen, I, I think it's worth mentioning uh, certainly the leadership of the growth committee, the leadership of our new city manager, John Collin, uh, which he's coined, it's all about growth, uh, is really indicative of what this work plan is. And uh, items 1 to 13 in this uh, growth work plan are actually from the corporate work plan. Uh, so what you're seeing here is uh, this is not just the departmental priorities that are being seen. These are cross-departmental priorities aimed, focused, linked to growth. You've got multiple now players um, advancing, enabling growth in different ways. And um, uh, this list is indicative of that. So this was pretty easy for me to assemble because I really just took it from the corporate work plan, which the city manager assembled. So again, items 1 to 13 are all related to that, uh, that corporate work plan. Uh, it should also be mentioned that this does not include operational stuff like we do expectation letters we do infographics we do a whole bunch of other stuff that we didn't put in here because these are just the major big projects um, the remaining projects uh, uh, later on in this 1418 are more departmental focused specific to growth and community development services so we end up having just a smaller list uh, than the year before which I think is a, a good lesson learned uh, from how we achieved last year and there's still ongoing uh, projects so these are the projects that we're proposing are, are linked and these again are only those that really touch on city staff's work this is not meant to be an exhaustive list from all the agencies so a slide that everybody really enjoys seeing is what we're not going to do. And part of what we learned in 2018 is that we, we, we probably promised too much. We probably said we were going to do too much. So part of what we have to do and we have to become stronger is to say what we're not going to do. And we've shared a list which we believe is very ambitious for 2018. We'd love to come back at the, uh, in 2009, uh, sorry, in 2019. We'd love to come back in 2020 and say, we got it all done. But uh, these are the things that we think would simply really push us off off that that target of those 18 priority projects and uh, it's not meant to be facetious it's just to say these are things that have come up people ask us about them we know they're they're important but we're saying not for 2019 we, we we will not be able to achieve those projects that we shared with you if these projects were identified so again it's not a fun slide to share but it is one that that is certainly worth it uh, especially from our lessons learned in the past so uh, this is my favorite slide. This is the, uh, um, the growth dashboard for 2019. So as you just saw the outcome of 2018 with year-end results, these are the targets established for 2019. Uh, a nicely populated section from Economic Development Greater St. John. They, you just received a presentation from them in March, so I've just uh, codified uh, those targets there. Uh, develop St. John shared a uh, new target for 2019. That's included. Discover St. John will be coming in uh, in May and uh, we'll certainly populate uh, their findings there. Uh, there's two other ones that I'd like to just share with you very quickly. One is under the Growth and Community Development Services. We added a new one which is different from your uh, from what you have in your presentation slide deck uh, that's printed off. It's under the Development Grant. So there's one which is related to the Beautification Grant, but we've also included this other one which is $2.5 in leverage private sector investment through the incentive program which is not the beautification grant so that will be another thing we'll be tracking this year and lastly and, and this is really again from the vision of the new city manager all departments are being asked on a quarterly basis to come forward with customer service and growth related improvements within their departments so we're gonna track those we're gonna we're gonna see 20 of each of those by the end of the year and, and certainly part of the vision would be to share with you those success stories you're seeing them come through council uh, on what these projects are and uh, those will continue so that's another tracking uh, dashboard for growth that uh, we will be covering here in 2019 um, we're, we're wrapping up and I do have uh, two other presenters after I'm done uh, just to, to wrap up this presentation but uh, I thought this was a useful slide just to share in terms of what's expected of growth committee members in 2019 and uh, I'm not going to go through all of this uh, I think the biggest thing is to continue being stewards and ambassadors to growth and that's not just in this venue of the committee meetings but also at council uh, presentations from staff, presentations from finance committee, anywhere where you can make those those, syner those synergies and those identifications of al alignment, bring them up. And uh, I think this committee has done a very great job at that in 2018, and I suspect we'll be very strong at it in 2019 as well. 
So um, to, to wrap up, I'm going to invite uh, Lisa Casey and Jody Forge, uh up to the podium. Uh, Lisa Casey is, of course, our uh, manager of um, uh, communications, and Jody is our senior financial analyst with the city. And um, one of the things that uh, they are going to present on uh, today is uh, our next round of infographics related to growth. If you remember last year, uh, I share with you the, the nerdy version of growth outcomes, which is in dashboards and, and long lists and PowerPoints. Well, we need to explain that to the public. Uh, the public doesn't necessarily always communicate in, in fun uh, public service uh, PowerPoints. They, they might communicate in a, in a, in a, in a more uh, direct uh, way. So um, Lisa's uh, handing out uh, the first of a series of uh, infographics and she'll speak to them and then we'll be, we'll be complete with this presentation. Good afternoon. So what you have here is two of um, what we call a suite of growth infographics. And if we're going on that theme of it's all about growth, that's really what these are highlighting is growth within the city and the contributions that we're seeing in the community. This is uh, a play on what we did last year. It's similar to the suite you would have seen last year. There were five of them produced. These are the first two of four, potentially five again this year. And it's the best way to describe these, I guess, is the summary of what Phil just said. <laughs> so when we look at those dashboards and all of that information, this is the, a way for us to aggregate some of that information and share it with the community and reflect some of that growth uh, in, a, in a really easy and digestible format. The primary uh, method of distribution for these is electronic, so they go digital. They will be produced and then sent officially through the city's channels, the website. We will have uh, the city managers ask me to produce a library of our infographics on the page. So we'll have a dedicated page to all city infographics where these growth ones will live. And they'll go uh, through distribution of our social media channels as well. Um, the, there will be paper copies available. So we do ask that you collect those. Let me know how many you might need both official languages and share those at every opportunity that you have. So if you're at an event, if you're meeting with someone and can leave them behind, we encourage you to do so. If you've got bulletin boards in your areas or, or within your organizations, you want to post them there for people to see, that's a really great way to, to help get the message across um, as well. So this, the, the two that you see right here, the first is the efforts to beautify St. John and entice further reinvestment. So that one's a really about uh, some of the programs you have there. The next is growth as our focus. And we're going to have a 2018 accomplishments one that summarizes the, uh, everything that we've achieved in 2018. And then a what's up next. So what can we anticipate in 2019? And again, that's a reflection of Phil's dashboard information that he shared with you. I believe that's it, unless there are any questions. Oh, just excellent. Thank you uh, to everybody. I, I think, um, uh, unfortunately, Phil, not everyone likes the geeky versions, right? So uh, I think just breaking this down, Lisa, great job uh, making it very simple. But but it's about celebrating. I mean, this committee from day one has been uh, very anxious to, to celebrate and talk about, you know, what it is doing and try to break it down very simply. I like the uh, up and down arrows, you know, are we trending? And it's about honesty, too. Are we trending up? Are we trending down? Where are we? And um, there's there's quite a bit and I just for example around some of the employment uh, it is a regular and I'm seeing some of the folks in the economic development world here with us today it is a regular scene I spend a lot of time online debunking this there are no jobs in st. John so you know it's in you know one infographic is not going to debunk that but just working together through very variety of sources just to, to say look here's the facts here's the information that that we have and here's what we know uh, that we're, our unemployment rate is down our vacancy rate is up you know if you're looking for a job you may there may be some skills mismatch but there's lots of jobs you know I know of one local employer very good local employer that is paying their employees two thousand dollar bonuses for referrals that are hired like that's become a side business for their own employees that's how how competitive it is and with some major employers in town to find talent so just you know the facts matter and this is just again one piece and I look forward to that that other piece because it just helps us celebrate um, you know the I think the good work and and own the areas that we might need to improve a bit so thank you yeah no problem another I guess another thing I want to say though is if you ever have an opportunity to take any of this information out on its own 
you can do that because they are very good sound bites the little pieces within uh, yeah. on their own so it doesn't have to be the entire document you share but if you remember two or three things that you've read here make sure that you share that news good, good point That's Councillor great. McKenzie did you have a question for uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, this is an excellent presentation, uh, Phil. I just have a couple of questions. Uh, <clears throat> going back to your 2018 target sheet, uh, we understand uh, the $50 million for the museum and actually being uh, in excess of our tax base growth by about $4.5 million. In the next one, though, Plan SJ, what are we doing to improve on our, on our uh, targets there? Because we had 95% and we only achieved 90 and then we had 85 percent and only achieved 59 so what strategies have you got to improve that i'll pass i'll pass that question on to our commissioner of growth and community development services i think you're i think you're live there general yeah oh no there we go Yes, Your Worship, through you to Councillor Mc McKenzie. Um, yes, there are a number of initiatives um, that we uh, have underway to really tackle on um, really intensification of the primary development area and some of our uh, urban and suburban intensification areas. Um, predominantly, the focus uh, in the work plan is around um, the Central Peninsula Neighbourhood Plan as well as the incentives um, rolling the incentives out, um, continuing to roll the incentives out for that area and uh, our efforts um, around uh, also related to customer service um, will continue to support uh, the ease of, of developing within the primary development area and certainly have, there are some su success stories um, in terms of um, the Calabria Estates development that, that uh, Council recently uh, approved uh, around seeing some major development um, within our suburban intensification nodes and we've seen quite a bit of momentum um, for really the first time in the last couple of years um, in the Central Peninsula. So we'll be staying the course with those those initiatives uh, going forward and hopefully we'll continue to boost, we'll see continued uh, momentum on those targets going forward. Okay, thank you. The uh the other question that I have is uh, filling unfulfilled jobs. Like, what strategies do we have to do that? I, I mean, there's different reasons why jobs are going unfulfilled, and I don't know that the city actually has any control over that. So I'm wondering what, I'm not sure if that's you, Phil. <laughs> um, um, so the, the filling unfilled jobs is, is led by Economic Development Greater St. John and one of the, um, I guess, actions here is there's all these unfilled jobs. Uh, if you go on, uh, on any uh, uh, job posting, there's, there's constantly, and uh, as you're starting to hear it as a theme, is identification of talent is very difficult. And part of uh, a switch that's happening in economic development from uh, what I'm learning is that it's not just about investment attraction, it's about the proof that you have talent present and that brings that brings investment attraction so one of the things that to edge SJ is doing right now is aggressively pursuing with employers identified uh, a list of identified employers uh, fast tracking their ability to identify that talent and uh, whether that's through um, uh, newcomers whether that's through immigration streams uh, whether that is through recruitment and uh, really mobilizing a community that's involved in that at federal provincial and federal Line. So we are involved in that. We are participants of that. David, Jacqueline, and I, the city manager's office, has been involved in supporting to ensure that there is that alignment. And if successful, if we can say we can consistently fill these jobs on a regular basis, that is only going to build confidence in current and future employers to say this is a spot that we can come, we can rely on that talent being present, and we will grow as a business. So if we're involved in it, then I suppose we would have the the breakdown what what's the breakdown if you've got 500 unfilled jobs is it like a hundred of them are high-tech jobs where we're trying to find talent and 400 of them are just jobs that people you know I mean maybe they're low-paying jobs or jobs that not people people are not really interested in doing like what What's the percentage yeah. that way? We, we can share with you the specific details of the breakdown. They have it all broken down. There's 28 different employers and uh, all these different jobs that are identified, uh, identified through various. So I'll share that with you uh, and members of the growth committee through uh, Edge SJ. Okay. And, uh, but it, it is worth mentioning that there's a variety of different employment uh, categories that are, are captured within uh, the unfilled jobs um, um, uh, workload. Okay. And the final 
final thing that I wanted to touch on was uh, the expansion of the incentive programs to uh, other geographic areas of the city. Like, it's working very well uptown, but we've been waiting a long time for it to be, you know, sent. Like my particular interest is the old North End to get that rebuilt. We're spending a lot of energy and we're doing a terrific job of cleaning up, tearing down and cleaning up. And uh, I think that, uh, uh, so I guess my question is, when are we going to actually start to expand that and get that area uh, cleaned up a bit? Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Andrew, would you like to jump sure. in? Um, your Worship, to, to the Councillor, uh, I think it's a reasonable expectation that we'll be able to address that in 2020. The plate is full for 2019, uh, but at the beginning of 2020 when we developed that work plan, uh, we, we, we've heard Council express this interest a number of times to expand beyond the Central Peninsula, uh, so that is probably work for 2020. We haven't looked at 2020 work plan yet, so nobody on the staff could really answer your, your question specifically today. We understand the concern of council on it, though. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, deputy, anything? Uh, well, I just uh, comment. Sorry, can you just turn your mic off for me, John? Thanks. Can you just get me on in? Sure. Yeah. All right. Get yeah. you on, deputy. Sure. Well, like, this is a good news story, and we've gone over it many times, but for the public, like when we uh, say that we've um, accomplished twenty-nine point six million increase in our tax base uh, unless we give break it down so people understand it like and and I don't know if there's any way we can do that but can we you know figure out what's what's it going to do for our tax base like what's it going to result in tax assessment for next year like I don't know if there's any way you can do that but when we're giving out something like that the average person it doesn't relate, yeah, you so know. Is it a million dollars more, five hundred? Yeah, what's the actual well, we, number in tax revenue? We need to, um, you know, when we're doing it here in open session, it would be nice if we could just uh, go that extra step or extra two steps to try to explain it in a more detailed way for the public to understand. And like even on the um, 845 jobs that we wanted to have, and we've got 821 hired. And I know that when um, Economic Development Agent is, Agency was in, that Ron Cadet said, well, we can tell you where we, we've produced jobs. It, that's very good for the public to know, because 821 jobs, you know, they weren't reported in the paper, people read it, but where are they? They don't know, and uh, if we're going to send a message to the public, it's got to be so they can say, okay, this is what it means. You know, I just, I just say that if we're trying to create a new story that we want the public to know exactly what's happening, then we have to break it down more, I think. And I, I think um, former Enterprise St. John said they had the companies listed where they got the jobs. And that's, that would be a good news story for the public, because then you know that, say, the TD Canada Trust organization or, you know, got 100 new jobs. You know, but and new jobs are happening all the time, and I understand that. But people don't get to relate to them because they don't know enough about it. They need it spelled out. It's a good opportunity, Jeffy, I think, to to uh, um, to just refresh. I mean, these are often announced, but but <laughs> probably likely forgotten 30 days later. So if oh, we yeah. took this opportunity to to break out, you know, TD 200, IBM 100, you know, just and we listed and out, other, it would be the other thing that does. If people are looking for jobs, and there's a lot of people that are not professional engineers or professionals, you know, um, that high up on the ladder, and they want to look for a job, and if they know that I'm using TD as an example, that there's jobs available out at the insurance agency there in Ross Avenue or their call center, then they might put the resume in there. I, I just see it. It's good for us. We can understand it because we've listened to it for, you know, every month. But the public, you've got to spell it out so they understand. And, and that's how you create a good news story happening in St. John because then they can say, oh, yes, that's happening because I read that in the paper or I listened to it on the radio if they don't get the paper. So Everybody gets the paper, Deputy. Oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, it's just you can't explain it out enough for the public because they don't they don't get all the stuff. Right. Anyway, it's just my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Um, so, just a couple of closing comments. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Hamilton, uh, Mr. Ouellette, uh, Mr. Dobelstein, uh, everybody else involved in it's a lot, a lot of work. Um, it was we have been ambitious. Uh, this council has been very focused on growth. Uh, it's a, it's the, it's, a, it's what I call one of the two bookend pillars of our uh, council's priorities. Uh, the roadmap, action-oriented, uh, new strategies. Thanks for the reminder, Phil, that the population growth strategy only came out in 2018. I, I too thought it was actually 10 years ago. Uh, that's why I'm always so anxious about results. So just just last year. Um, uh, thanks for uh, taking our feedback. I certainly, uh, I think. Uh, from a formal perspective, I'd ask the committee just to endorse the 2019 work plan. I think it's an excellent work plan. Um, I, 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 I'm um, uh, so just rapid fire here. Um, thanks for the reminder because I think um, uh, we say you know two million or three million we invest in, but but I really loved your 12 million 436 thousand dollar slide because we invest a lot of money in in areas and and you know the the public may not always recognize that, but we invest a lot of money. Money in uh, economic development, in in uh, growth and development activity, and in buildings that are supposed to help us attract people to our community and and keep you know and, and offer up things like arts and culture and entertainment and so on. And that's a that's a lot of money. So we should be ensuring that there's a return on that that money. So thanks for that. Uh, I think you know to celebrate the 2018 results. I think there was a lot done. There's always headwinds. There's always challenges. But uh, uh, to to support that. I think a little bit on the theme of the deputy, always keeping in mind that why these focus areas matter. And the one that I use, for example, is population growth. And and um, and uh, I'm so pleased, and I know, I know there are estimates, but, but let's just go positively with the estimate that we have turned around half of the loss between 2012 and 2016. If, if you know if we go with those numbers and that is exceptional news because those 2400 people that we lost in the 2016 census with the tie together with our unconditional grant had an impact of about 18 million dollars to the city of St. John this population growth matters for your economy it matters to the city's finances like it is incredibly important but keeping in mind to the deputy's point about for example the jobs listings like just the, why these topics matter and and really breaking down our information sharing uh, uh, for the general public I think alignment amongst our economic development agencies, our population growth agencies, all of the folks working, it needs we need to be pushing for more and more and more alignment all the time because I think that is incredibly um, urgent. Um, uh, in terms of population growth, I, I continue to believe that we have a target rich environment in not only you know uh, we need we need immigration we know we need approximately 120,000 people over the next uh, 15 to 20 years we know for example JD Irving alone have announced uh, somebody can help me with the number somewhere in the range of 10,000 retirements over the next 10 years like this is this is probably the most pressing economic challenge for the province which means it's going to be very competitive uh, so I I keep thinking about, uh, and I think Councillor McKenzie asked, we need to continue to enhance the ma market labor information that we have, skills required by sector, and then overlay that with the target rich environment of Toronto, Vancouver, and globally, where people are waking up this morning and saying, I, I don't even know how I can get to work today, I don't know how I can pay my mortgage, I don't, and we're seeing more and more of this in St. John. Um, uh, Toronto, uh, uh, Vancouver, uh, the U.S., uh, people from all over the globe. So I, I still think there's a, there's, a, there's a real opportunity for us to enhance the marketing uh, in those target-rich environments. We've got jobs. We've got affordable uh, homes. We've got quality of life, uh, rivers, oceans, parks, and, and you can know everybody in the city within three days. Um, so... Um, I think we need to uh, understand, I had an amazing conversation with uh, uh, the ambassador or somebody in the ambassador's office from Brazil recently. And she was saying, Don, if you're trying to, uh, and there's, I get notes every single week from people from Brazil who want to move out of Brazil. 
And she said, for example, for Brazilians, you need to talk about safety. That's the number one. So what is it by country, by Toronto, it's affordability, it's quality of life, it's not walking around like a zombie. Uh, Vancouver, probably very similar. Uh, Brazil, it's safety. I think we need to understand, and I'm looking, I guess, to Mr. Roulette and Mr. Dobblestein, safety, employment, housing, community, and what are those factors that matter most? Uh, I, thank you, city manager. Thank you, staff. All about growth. Um, absolutely. I, I love uh, that, that our corporate work plan is aligned with our growth work plan, the initiatives to deliver uh, 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 growth-related enhancements which is all about focus and cultural enhancement. Thank you, city manager. I think that's uh, uh, excellent news uh, here, here today as well. Um, and everything is interconnected. You know, we all have to work as a team, uh, people, jobs. I'm so proud of this committee, this team, staff team, council team. We talk about growth every day. You know, we're working on growth every day. And, and that and our fiscal, fiscal, you know, brothers and sisters, that, those are the two most important pieces for me. So really excited. I hope you can tell. I'm very excited about this presentation today. And I just asked the, you know, the committee if it would just, uh, I guess, uh, uh, just a motion really just to endorse this 2019 work plan. So moved. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That was excellent. Uh, next presentation. Um, Phil, are you introducing this as well? Okay, thank you. St. John Local Immigration Partnership, uh, Mr. Roulette. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'll just do a, a, a little overview on, on this. In uh, March 2017, when the uh, Common Council endorsed uh, or adopted the Roadmap for Smart Growth, it uh, contemplated transferring this uh, St. John Local Immigration Partnership uh, from the Human Development Council to the City of St. John. Um, the, the population growth framework, which was endorsed or adopted by Council last year, uh, also indicated that uh, there should be a greater alignment uh, with the Local Immigration Partnership. And uh, before I go any further, um, you, a good question might be, what is the Local Immigration Partnership? Um, uh, it is a federally funded program uh, that improves settlement and integration of newcomers. Uh, it is a coordinating body. Uh, it is a, a body to support uh, welcoming communities, among other things. And um, we have a really fortunate situation here in St. John in that um, before this council uh, was elected in 2016, um, population growth, um, newcomer uh, uh, issues, um, and uh, becoming the most welcoming community um, was, was certainly a priority, but it wasn't elevated to the level of priority that this council provided. So at the time, uh, Human Development Council predicted that this was going to be an issue for our community and applied at the time uh, to be the holder of the Local Immigration Partnership, the host. And they were successful and that funding uh, runs from 2017 to 2020. And uh, I did want to uh, um, commend uh, HDC for this because this is the foresight that uh, HDC does bring uh, to our community and they've done it before with other initiatives and programs. And um, I know that uh, uh, Zwin uh, 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 Ning is here as well as Randy Hatfield and uh, they played a really important role in making the local immigration partnership very successful in St. John uh, getting it off its feet and it's the first ever local immigration partnership in St. John and uh, their funding runs out in 2020 and um, um, so I, I did want to thank them for for the great work that uh, they've done um, and now, um, the, the Government of Canada is looking for, for applications for 2020 up to 2025, so five-year funding. And uh, it is certainly contemplated and work has been in place to align and transition the Local Immigration Partnership from the host of Human Development Council to the City of St. John. And um, uh, there's a, the report identifies a whole bunch of these kind of uh, alignment efforts that have been done over the last couple years to make sure that there is synergy there. And I guess I'd just answer a very simple question. Why why would we, the City of St. John, want the Local Immigration Partnership within the city versus it being in, a, in an organization like the Human Development Council? And the, the easiest answer is to say that 
the City of St. John's role as it relates to newcomer support, immigration support, population growth, has really been a coordinating role. Uh, uh, David and I, uh, Dobblestein, use the language of we're setting the table for population growth. We're not necessarily implementing everything. That's a variety of organizations and groups that do that, but we set the table. And the city has a really important role in that, that leadership role. And the, the LIP, the Local Immigration Partnership, provides that coordinating role. A whole bunch of different stakeholders involved in the support, uh, settlement support, um, a promoting a welcoming community, and the city believes that it's a very well positioned to play that role. Um, and um, this is a, a friendly, a friendly uh, uh, idea from Human Development Council and other stakeholders within the community. It's not uh, considered an aggressive takeover or by any means. Uh, they uh, they encourage it. There's a letter of support that uh, that Randy has submitted uh, that would be part of our application. The application for the uh, five year uh, local immigration partnership um, is due at the end of this month, uh, quick turnaround time. Uh, David Dobblestein is even busier than he was before. And um, it will be for five years of funding, likely in the vicinity of about $100,000 a year for five years. That funding would really support that coordinating role. Uh, it usually comes in the form of a, a project manager or coordinator to support that, and we would certainly intend to do that. We believe that fits really nicely in the great work that uh, population growth and growth and community development services have, have done to identify alternative sources of revenue and, and uh, to support the, the efforts of growth from retransitioning the arts and culture role uh, to uh, succeeding in uh, uh, getting funding for the Succeed and Stay uh, program uh, and uh, utilizing the great uh, synergies from our urban planners and uh, other members of the uh, Growth and Community Development Services team. So um, with that being said, uh, the report here uh, will, if adopted by Growth Committee, will go obviously immediately to uh, Council for adoption so that we can uh, get that letter of, uh, of approval from uh, co Common Council to submit our application. Uh, David is here. He is the pen on, on this application, so he would be much better than I would and on specific questions related to our application. Um, but we are seeking uh, Growth Committee's uh, endorsement of our uh, uh, of our pursuit of this uh, application. Uh, well, I remember when we discussed this uh, a number of years ago, I guess a couple of years, and at that time, um, the person, the physical person that's doing this was at Human Development, if I can re remember, and they were doing the report, and then it was going to be passed over to the city. So now you're going to make an application for a five-year funding. So if we're successful on getting the funding, is the person from HDC coming to the city of St. John? And and how is this? Is this a contract for five years or is this a person on permanent staff? I guess I just need that clarification because I thought when we discussed it uh, two or three years, whatever it was, go, that it was going to be almost, I think, the same person. The person that was going to start out with HDC was then going to come to the city. So maybe we so can start with that. So your worship to the Deputy Mayor. Uh, our LIP manager is actually in the room. Dr. Uh, Zhu Nguyen is here as well. Um, it, it's a little early to say who, who is coming over when and whatnot. It's certainly, we would certainly welcome Dr. Nguyen's talents in City Hall. Um, but the process is not as simple as saying HDC, you know, turn over the keys and we'll take it from here. The government of Canada has to approve, but the vast majority of LIPS Canadian wide are embedded in the local municipality. So uh, what we'd envision is this would be a, a position in the city on contract, it would be fully funded by this grant, um, and, you know, obviously would previous experience would be worthwhile if we could, if we could have that, so. So does the grant cover the entire cost? We um, believe so, yes. The individual? Um, so it would be a continuation of the work from HDC and, and what's been done to date will be transferred over to the city? Correct. And we've briefed the LIP Council, which is sort of the governing body of our local immigration participants in St. John. They're fully supportive of this. We've been walking them through the process. We've been working on this uh, for a number of years now and we feel this is the opportunity uh, to do this. We've made tremendous gains already with, at the local level with our, with our LIP. And we won't lose any of those gains by transferring. In fact, we'll be able to accelerate them because we have so many more resources in-house at City Hall. And how uh, short are we of getting funding? We, it's 
um, um, when you've started the program in a community, do they normally continue on giving you the funding? So in the 10 years that LIPS have been operated by the Department of Immigration, Refugees and Citizens of Canada, I don't believe they've ever denied an application for a city. So they, they, they're continually renewed and in fact, traditionally they were three year grants and now IRCC has extended them to five years, an indication that they really believe this is part of a new so, permanent model yeah. for settlement integration and support. And just my other comment would be, so then I can, yeah, I'm not going to have, I can be assured that if we take this on, that HCC are not going to be doing the same thing as we're doing, that we're going to be the sole operator of this? Correct. And so, not because I think it should be here, whether it's there or there. I just don't think it should be, you know, two people doing the same. No, as you can see in the, the letter attached to your packet, there's a letter of support yeah, from the Human yeah. Development Council, which we'll be sharing with IRCC. They're working with us on our application currently. We anticipate the transition will be very smooth and friendly. And so I, I guess we won't know for sure until the end of August of whether we're successful? Correct. So then HDC would continue on doing everything you're doing H until the end of August? HDC will be the continued agreement holder until the end of March of 2020. Oh, so so they, they have funding until the end of 20 until the end of March 2020 at which point the new contract if successful would transition to the city in 2020 in April of 2020 oh, okay okay thank you thank you Kenzie thank you worship um, so I think continuity is extremely important in this so I mean is this, is this the idea going forward because I'd hate to I'd hate to change everything in midstream we've come so far so, I mean, is that the idea that we're going to maintain the same people in the place? Okay. And, and you say that the LIP costs are totally covered by that, by that grant, or is there additional money applied for from different organizations to make this work? So, uh, to your worship to the councillor, we can ask for a certain budget. So what we anticipate the costs will be, it would be fully covered. So that would be staffing costs, there would be some promotional materials if we wanted to send staff for training or conferences or what have you. We anticipate those would be covered. The city certainly has it within its purview that if there's some strategic opportunities later on that were not part of the initial application, we can either provide our own funding or that we anticipate there'll be periods throughout the next five years where there'll be opportunities, sort of small call for proposals where we could submit uh, you know, request for funding for specific initiatives. But for the most part, yes, this, the funding will cover, we anticipate it will fully cover the cost of operating the program out of City Hall. And that, that 100000 includes the rent and everything else? Yes, we can apply for all, all the admin costs as part of this, yes. Okay. Um, and we've pretty much guaranteed from 20 to 25 we're going to get the $100,000 a year? We have to put in an application. And Again, we're, we're confident that with the support of the Human Development Council and our own LIP Council that we'll be successful, but... Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you for the presentation. Um, I, I guess just a couple of quick comments. Um, uh, one, it, it um, uh, is a great thanks to the Human Development Council for their leadership and the team for the leadership, as Phil already said, uh, to get us off the ground, to provide that leadership, to, uh, to, <laughs> to manage this particular guy's expectations at times. Thank you for that. It's, uh, there's a lot of anxiousness around population growth. So thanks for all that great work. And, and I would just say it's been, it's the plan, it was the plan, right? So uh, we're out early. Thanks for being out early. We, we have till March 2020. Uh, so we're out early. We're going to make our application and uh, and uh, you know hopefully everything is successful and we just sort of uh, uh, move on and then uh, uh, HTC will continue to do lots of other great work that it does uh, already in town so uh, thank you for that um, so just ask somebody to move the recommendation then in the report I'll move the recommendation Hang on a second I, I'd can like to have another question if I yes may. please can we just can you just tell the public uh, probably to you David I, or uh, you know what what will all this end up for the or the whole community like this whole writing of the report and doing all the research and what will that that do at the end of this program or what can it do right now like can it help all new comers coming in it helps immigrants it, just explain a bit for everybody sure if you can. so through your worship local immigration partnerships are primarily a coordinating body uh, for local sediment the LIP itself doesn't actually support newcomers directly. 
it's bringing everyone to the same table and getting greater alignment and resources and programming and trying to address specific needs. So a, a typical hallmark of LIPS is they release a settlement strategy. Now we do have our own high level uh, growth strategy, but we're relying on our local immigration partnership to get down to the weeds a little bit more. What are the specifics? And so our, our own LIP has created four working groups that are seeking to address issues related to employment and labor that newcomers face or helping employers get jobs or em employees get jobs or helping employers hire newcomers. We have a health uh, working group that's going to address some of the challenges that our newcomers face, particularly refugees who are coming from war-torn countries. Um, we have a welcoming communities working group, which is positioned to make St. John more welcoming and bring it to the forefront. And the data is clearly shows when, when they've done a longitudinal analysis of LIPS throughout Canada, LIPS that are embedded in a city hall tend to have a lot greater social exceptions than the community for immigration. So if we're trying to change the narrative uh, citywide of being more welcoming and becoming the most welcoming community in Canada, it makes sense for us to also embed our LIP uh, in City Hall as well. One of the other unique advantages to our local immigration partnership is we have a newcomer advisory panel. This is like a consolidated focus group of, of 24 newcomers from different countries, different backgrounds, different experiences that we'll be able to rely on more heavily. So if we're wanting to ask specific questions, what do newcomers think about this if we were to roll this out, we'll be able to tap into that very, very quickly. So there's a lot of uh, real opportunities for the community. And again, it's about providing greater alignment and greater coordination. So when we just heard this morning th from this very successful immigrant that was here and gave a story, and the one thing he said, he indicated what the barriers were. And those barriers, they're around. So does this address, I mean, is there somebody on a committee somewhere that if I was a new immigrant and come in today, I can find out how to go to uh, fix my Canada pension, for instance. Somebody's going to tell me where to go and how to do it. I mean, where, I mean do we still have that ability right at the grassroots that people can get help when they come in? Um, so to, to clarify some you know of the comments, yeah, so that is certainly one of the identified gaps is right now there's a lot of different doors that newcomers can go through and we're trying to make sure that either there's one door or they get effective referrals over the place. We're working on a consolidated website with the information uh, that we heard our guest said would be really valuable. That was certainly something that we identified very quickly. With a settlement strategy, so what we're doing as part of Succeed and Stay, uh, and Dr. Nguyen is working on this with a team of researchers that we're bringing in, we're going to be polling and interviewing hundreds of newcomers in the community, finding out what their needs are, what the gaps are in services, what opportunities there are, and then that way we can start to provide greater alignment and realignment of services, you know, in our city with all the different settlement agencies or post-secondary institutions or employers. And then we can start to break those down into working. How are we going to address these specific items individually? And eventually, you know, we anticipate this would provide greater levels of service for newcomers. So if, if newcomers have specific services, one of the projects we're working on is a better mapping of where would they need to go. And again, we need to do a better job of making sure that information gets in front of the right people who are looking. And that's certainly something so that we're, we're addressing. we're still kind of working on all this. Correct, yes. All together, yeah. Okay, thanks. So um, just you just reminded me a couple of comments. One, I think I love the um, I think that the the, the embedding in, in City Hall is a very, very strong statement that needs to be made. It gives direct access to municipal leadership, both staff and elected from these the agencies and, and really the players, the folks that are making things happen. I think that's an incredibly powerful statement. And number two, I really think of the, the lip as uh, and I think there's been uh, heard really nothing but uh, very positive feedback feedback uh, about bringing the groups together and I really think of it as glue you know uh, go, you know all kinds of uh, really uh, strong uh, organizations passionate organizations but bringing everybody together to say you know and fluid as well here's what we need to do who's working on what because you may have is it fair to say David you may have four committees this year and you may have three different committees next year because it, you know it, it, it evolves it moves you you solve a few issues but then next year you have to solve some new issues so I'm 
I'm, I, I think um, we've come a long way in a very short period of time and uh, you know hopefully we'll be successful with the funding and and uh, and I think it's where the rubber hits the road with the lip to me because you you pull all of the folks together that are doing really amazing work and what I've been told from some of the agencies is it's really clarified for them uh, what they're better at and what somebody else might be better at and and there's been hopefully a little less sorry you know um, sort of duplication in areas and it's been the leadership of the LIP that they've said has clarified um, uh, their role in achieving the bigger result so okay so I think the recommendations on the floor all those in favor okay okay all right great perfect thank you motions carried we yeah yes exactly okay thank you and our final item for today is um, and just before I forget, I don't want to forget our final item today, uh, but just as we're speaking, uh, there's uh, at 1245 a citizenship ceremony. I just unfortunately found out about it today is taking place down at the museum. I, I would encourage anyone that has never gone to a Canadian citizenship ceremony to go it is the most moving experience I'm so I'm hoping if we finish this one quickly I'm running down to the museum come with me it's an amazing experience to sit and watch 20 30 50 people become new Canadians it is incredibly moving so uh, if you got a few minutes after the meeting run to the museum our last item is um, a vacant dangerous building program just a discussion on the growth reserve and Miss Hamilton I think you're going to introduce it okay Yes, Your Worship, um, and members of committee. So this afternoon, our final item is to uh, report on progress with the uh, very successful Enhanced Dangerous Buildings uh, program that's really been championed by this uh, committee. Um, Ms. Rachel Van Wart, who's now transitioned to a new role as manager of uh, customer service and operations is here to give you a report on our 2018 stats as well as our target um, for 2019 and uh, as part of that we will be requesting uh, additional resources go to keeping that momentum going um, on the delivery of that program at the same level we did in in 20, 2018 so and I know um, Ms. Rachel Van Ward has I think Catherine Lowe is in the audience as well she will be uh, transitioning into that role going forward but uh, for now I'll turn it over to, to Rachel to run oh, through sorry. Can, you, uh, can you just uh, deputy would you just turn your mic off for me thank you and then Rachel if you just hit your button there should be a button there you go thank you perfect thank you good afternoon growth committee um, the Dangerous and Vacant Building Program has achieved uh, tremendous success uh, in 2018 and we have a number of program accomplishments uh, to celebrate. So we issued a total of 32 notices to comply in 2018 and we resolved a total of 83 cases. This includes 50 repaired and reoccupied buildings resulting in revitalized communities and tax-based growth and 33 demolitions of derelict properties, noting that the city completed 27 of these 33 demolitions. Uh, these significant results would not have been possible without Growth Committee's support uh, in 2018. Further results achieved uh, due to the Growth Committee's support include a focus area in the North End, uh, which included 26 properties. Uh, 10 of those 26 were demolished, two were repaired and reoccupied, uh, and focus on the North End will continue throughout 2019. Uh, additional positive trends to note include the severity of conditions in the buildings uh, at the top of the party list are decreasing, and in addition, the caseload is also decreasing. So uh, mm. year to date, 2019, we have 188 cases versus in 2018, there was a high at one point of 220 cases. So we're finally starting to see that trend in the right direction. Mm, wonderful. So looking ahead to 2019, uh, we will maintain the service level to continue the program's uh, momentum. Uh, we will demolish derelict buildings uh, when required and work on spurring reinvestment uh, and revitalization of communities by encouraging property owners to repair and reoccupy buildings when possible. Uh, our targets for 2019 include 30 notices to comply, uh, 30 total building demolitions, and 50 repaired and reoccupied buildings for a total of 80 resolved cases, which is the same level of service as 2018. 
So uh, in conclusion, to achieve those mentioned targets, uh, we're requesting that the Growth Committee recommend to Common Council that $25,000 uh, be transferred from the Growth Reserve Fund to allow the same level of service as 2018 for the Enhanced Dangerous and Vacant Building Program. We are requesting the same amount of support that was provided in 2018 to achieve the same results. If the funding is not provided for 2019, there will be a noticeable difference uh, in the level of service provided with reduction and anticipated reduction from 80 resolved cases to about 60. Uh, with that, I'll no now open the floor to any questions, if any. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Can I just ask I'll you? I'll second what, it. Deputy. <laughs> what was your budget for 2018? Total. What did you spend? Through you, your worship, to, to the deputy, I'll refer that to uh, Ms. Poffenroth. I, I, I just, I, is this going to, the 25000 is going to bring your 2019 budget up to what you had in 2018, or? That's right. I, yeah, so what, why, why did we decide um, to make your 2019 budget? lower than the 2018 if we knew at budget time. Sure. So we're looking at a status quo budget for 2019. So in 20, so we have the same operating budget funding as we did in 2018. And for a status quo budget, that would mean that we would have to augment the operating budget with the $25,000 from the growth reserve as we did last year. And the reason why we did that last year is because the growth committee uh, wanted in uh, more resolved cases. Yeah, I understand. All right, and so with you're that. You're doing a great job on that, but I still, so at the end of it, if we give you $25,000 right now and you've got whatever was in there for 2019, which I don't know what the figure was. Oh, I'd have to, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, the dangerous and vacant building program, I think it's, it's around 300,000, but that includes a um, significant uh, amount of funding to do actually the demolitions. I don't have the number right, right with so me, but it's what it's I'm trying to find out is: is this an increase for the 2019 budget up to no. of 25,000? Through your worship, no. It's the same level of funding as was provided in 2018. So we re we reduced your budget in December. When no, we last did the budget for 2019. It's last year. It would be the same um, formula. So certain amount in the operating plus 25 out of growth reserve. In 2018, so 2019 would be the same amount in operating and the 25000 So, from the so another way to do it, though. Same. We did it last year then out of the growth fund. Yes. That's right. So it's so, the same level so, of funding. So another way to do it, though, um, would, would be to th th um, another way to do it for 20 would be to add $25,000 to exactly. that line item and then it's in the operating budget and not coming from reserve. That, that's right. That's, that so would be something. I, 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 I know it's too late, but uh, that's the way I would prefer to do it because that, that, that identifies what our money is being used for when we do a budget. It, if I may, for the, me for the members of the Growth Committee, uh, we now have two years in a row where we've had an operating budget that we're topping up with 25000 mm -hmm. The writing's on the wall, so in the 2020 budget uh, referrals, we'll have to take a look and see if we just want to roll that into the operating budget based on our current financial situation. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I would say we should because, that's, I mean, we're doing a great job on dilapidated buildings and it's a success yeah. story thanks to your work both of you and the thing is but I think the budget should be what the budget yeah. really is oh, oh I, and I, I I don't disagree with that notion we of course have to find that 25,000 from somewhere else in the operating well, budget you, you, if we're going we, to give it to I would rather reduce the <laughs> growth reserve and, and that and that may be the option we come to council with I don't know uh, but certainly we're taking it as as noted that if we're doing this two years running then there's something wrong with the initial allocation of funding and we will come to you with a re well, with a I recommendation remember when we're doing the 2020 budget yes I'll be asking I'm sure you will the money in. <laughs> why would you put in that you know this anyway we are yeah we're. thank you deputy um, so thanks Rachel can you just go back to your oh sorry Councilor McKenzie Thank you. It's hard to get a late. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, I look. This is a this is a real good success story. I think that uh, th there's money in the reserve from 2018. Am I right on that? Well, a, there's a total pot of uh, of reserve money. Yes, there's we 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 uh, funded in 18, 
and we funded in budget 19 for a total pot of, of uh, Phil had it earlier yeah yeah so am I correct in saying that there's more in the pot now than what we budgeted for 19 so the, there was money left over for 18 yes yeah, so there's a reserve yes. yeah yeah because I'll tell you I mean this is one of the most successful uh, things that we've had and $25,000 I mean that's great that yeah. brings you up to where you were last year but if we had additional leftover that we could uh, accelerate that just a little bit more it the return on investments is huge and it is an investment because when we tear down a building we submit the bill and we get the money back right so I mean for me it's it's money well spent and money you're getting back mm -hmm. and if we've got extra money right now from this particular pot that's in my mind where we should be investing it because we're going to get it all back mm -hmm. I don't think money's the issue Okay. It's horsepower, yeah. It's, it's, staff, it's staff capacity that's the issue to take on more cases uh, than the target that we have a baby right now. Um, it, it, you're absolutely right. Money's not the issue because we're, we get all the money back, yeah. most of the money back in the end. Uh, it's a question of staff capacity in terms of doing all the legwork required in order to knock a building down or to get it refurbished. And there's only a, 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 a finite amount of staff capacity. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can you just, uh, Rachel, just very quickly go back to your uh, your target and achievement slide? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. So I I just echo. Um, I I think there's great feedback from committee today on on some budget related items and and as Councillor McKenzie just said, it's just incredibly successful program. Like if if I, you know, um, um, I can't tell you how pleasing it is to get a call from a citizen who's concerned about. A particular building and be able to call them back and say it's on the list um, you know our team is working on it and oh you know, and on three weeks later get back to them and say by the way it's the notices have gone out and in in some cases you know people had been tortured by buildings for 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 a decade that that you know you, your team have dealt with and now it's opened up a piece of development land I think so I think that is positive I think the number of uh, you know cases I I think we're we're you know we're well over 200 230 40 cases in the last three years now um, uh, uh, dealt with which is an, an incredible result and I'm actually incredibly uh, pleased about the repaired list uh, uh, Ms. Hamilton and I had a meeting with a very concerned uh, uh, person uh, uh, I think it was before Christmas now I don't remember it all blends together who believed 80 meant 80 teardowns and we said no in fact more than 50 percent are being repaired so they walked away from our meeting with a huge smile on their face saying I had no idea so that's 50 repaired buildings in 2018 that have increased our tax bill and improved the neighborhood improved safety so look I, I, I think you've done an incredible job uh, and this citizens are noticing and they thank you like I, I have conversation after conversation about people because if you live next to or you know this is and you know we think about I know Councillor McKenzie all of us but the you know is very passionate about the the North End and I really like the way you've been strategic as well about uh, where the, the homes are and, and looking for clustering opportunities because what I've seen you do in the North End is take an immense safety hazard where we know, we've, we know we had a number of fires, but you've also now created a cluster of land uh, that, that from a development perspective, there's eyes on these clusters of land now. Uh, one at a time is one opportunity. A cluster of land is a is a potential for, for for density and something even bigger. So it started out as let's clean our city up and let's make our city more safe, and it's and it's evolved into uh, tax base growth, um, neighborhood safety enhancements, and developers now saying I'm going to go look in in areas of the city that I wasn't looking in before. So you thought you were just doing notices of compliance, uh, Rachel, but you've uh, you've made your city a better place, uh, you and your team. So thank you for that. I just want to add one comment too, and I, I, it just came to my mind. I was speaking with a lady just the other day, and she wanted me to pass on a great big thank you for a property that was cleaned up on Wellesley Avenue, and she said that was like that for a long, long time. And I said, well, it was a new program. And I said, it's working well, and you'll probably see a lot more of it coming forward. Because these dilapidated buildings are, are one, one thing, thing. Yep. but when you've got backyards and front yards looking like a dump, 
Yeah. And we can go in now, clean it up, and charge it back. That's worth it. Great and gold. Th thank you, Councillor, for the reminder. I think it was in the report, because uh, I don't think it's there. I think there were 70, 75. So in addition to 83 cases closed on this side, to the Councillor's uh, comment, there were 75 unsightly premises cleaned up. And again, I just received a note from a, a business owner on Rossi Avenue who said, you know, uh, can you help me with this place across the street? that's turning into a, a junkyard right so it's yeah so perfect so thank you very much and uh i can, can't remember if we voted or not on that no not yet okay thank you all those in favor Aye. anyone contrary minded not seeing any thank you motion's carried okay well thank you very much excellent meeting today to our staff teams thank you for all the work uh, city manager thank you and thank you to the committee wonderful motion to adjourn thank you Hi, how are you? Good.